Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to video four. How do I drag and drop number one? So this is going to be a simple, basic, introductory video to how the drag and drop operation works in Unreal Engine 4. There will be at least one other video containing another way of doing it, but this will be how do we do drag and drop and to try to understand the basics in the literally easiest way possible. So let's get started. What we're going to do is I'm going to create a map. So let's do a new map. That way we can start everything fresh. Let's save it out. And let's see, I am, how do I, and drag and drop, and we'll call this one drag and drop map. So now I have somewhere fresh to start off with. Now drag and drop basically, in an overview of how it works, is when you click your mouse on something and start dragging, if that something accepts a drag and drop event, it's going to fire a drag and drop event on drag basically. Once you're dragging, you can choose to do something and that something is you create a drag and drop operation. Once you create the drag and drop operation, that basically allows you to pass information to the drop once you drop it and is where you assign what your dragging looks like. So you can have different things in your start, drag and drop. Now, once you drop your item somewhere, the drop operation is fired on whatever you drop it on. But that means, of course, it has to accept a drop. So let's do that. You're going to need four widgets is what we're going to need. But we're going to create them in the order that we need them. So we need something on our screen we can drag from. So let's do a new user interface widget. And we're going to call this one widget blueprint drag from. This is basically going to be our main screen. And we're going to make this really simple. We are going to have a screen and it's going to have something on it that's draggable from. What I mean by that is let's do a horizontal box and drop it in here. And technically this is it. This is going to be our drag from. This is just going to be what we're going to put on the screen. It's not filled with anything yet. We're going to fill it with the other things, but we need to get it on the screen first. This is pretty simple. It's our standard create widget. And we're going to do the drag from, if we spell it properly. And then we're going to add it to the viewport. And then we're going to get the player controller. We're going to set the input to UI. This is all standard stuff, so that way we can actually interact with it. So now we have it set to UI. And then of course we need to set the mouse to show. So that way we can actually see the mouse and interact with it like that. Okay, so this should in theory, uh, assuming I actually set up the dip, yep, I did, okay. This should give us this right here. And this is exactly what we expect. We can move the mouse around and there's nothing on the screen because our drag from is empty. So now we need something that's going to actually accept the drag and that we're going to drag. So let's make another blueprint. We're going to make a widget blueprint. We're going to call widget blueprint and we're going to call this the draggable item. And I have no idea if I said draggable. Ah, let's go with two G's. Why not? Draggable item. This is going to represent our icon or our skill or an inventory item. It's going to represent what we're going to drag. We're going to make it pretty simple. We're going to make it an image. So it's just an image. I want to actually size this to 128 by 128. That way it's a fixed size. And let's give it a color like green. So this will be our draggable item. Let's go ahead and go back to our drag from. Let's drag a couple of them in there. So let's find our draggable item which, uh, lordy, I have so many of these things in here now. Oh, look, we can search. That would be smart. There we go, draggable item. And we're just going to drag and drop a couple draggable items in here. Let's go with five. Let's set up our horizontal box is like we want it. Let's set up our draggable items to fill. And let's set them to center. 
so they're 128. So there we go. Now we have five items we can drag. If we ran this, you'll see them, but of course nothing happens because like I mentioned, we haven't set up any of the events for it. Let's go back to our graph. Let's go to our draggable item. And this thing needs to accept the mouse as an input event and it needs to be able to drag off of it. Over here at functions, we have overrides. We have our drags and drops here, which we're gonna use, but we also have the mouse ones. And we're gonna care about the mouse button down. So when the mouse button's down and the event is a drag detected, right here, detect drag if pressed, what this is going to do is fire off a drag event if a drag is detected. This is one of the requirements in order to start dragging and dropping. Basically, uh, whenever we have the mouse button down, detect a drag if it's pressed. And if so, what that does is function override on drag detected fires. Calls when the slate detects that a widget starts to be dragged. And I can show you this right here. Let's do print string. Let's save this out. Let's go and run this. You'll notice when I start dragging, it says hello. So we've got the first part. We've got our drags being detected. Let's delete our print string. This is all we need right here for detecting the drag. This basically says, hey, listen to this key and we'll do something. And of course, you can change it if you want a different key. Right mouse, middle mouse, whatever you want. So we're done with our mouse button down. So now we have our drag detected event. This is important. This is the event that basically will be our drag and drop operation. What do I mean by drag and drop operation? Well, let's type drag and drop and well, contact sensitivity is going to work. Let's do this. And we find a, well, we don't actually. Why don't we find that? Well, let's try just drag. And do, do, do. And of course we have nothing in there. Well, why are we having issues? Well, it's right here actually, and it's the stupid and symbol causing the problem. It's the create drag and drop operation. It's under user interface, and this is the meat and potatoes, or the important part, when you're doing a drag and drop. This is what determines a drag and drop has happened, and this determines the contents of the drag and drop, and also what it looks like. If we were to just wire this up and go like that, Let's go ahead and save it and play. Well, nothing's happening. Our drag and drop operation is working. We just haven't actually told it to do anything. So there's a couple ways of doing this. You can create a separate item, your draggable item, basically your representation of what is being dragged. Or you could reuse your draggable item itself, the item you've indicated you want to drag personal preference. Let's say, for example, we're looking at our screen and these are green. And let's say they represent pieces of armor. We have a chest piece and a helmet and a sword and a shield. However, once we drag them, we want them to look different. We either want them to be in a border or we want them to, we want them to be styled differently. We may want them to look the same in terms of a helmet or a sword, but we want them styled differently. So we're going to create a separate widget we're going to drag when we drag. So let's create a new widget and we'll call this one widget blueprint and we'll call this one draggable item. We'll call this the drag image. So this is the image we're going to show when we drag. Pull this up. Let's go ahead and kill it. It's going to be the same for our example, just different color. So I set up a payload. That's going to be this image of size 128, 128. We'll color this one a, I'll go to yellow. We'll go ahead and save this. We'll close this. We'll close our drag from, because we don't need that. And now we're working on our draggable drop operation. And if you notice right here, we have a default drag visual. What is the visual when we are dragging? And it requires a widget reference. So what we need to do is create a widget. And if you notice the output is a widget reference, we're gonna create a draggable item drag image and then we're gonna feed it into our visual. Let's go ahead and hit play and let's see what happens. Well, we still have nothing here, so we need to figure out why. So we are creating it, we are putting it in here, 
And we are, oh, well, we're not returning from our operation. So let's try this again, hit play. And there we go. So now we have our drag wall. If you look, I drag here, nothing, but we drag from here and I can drag out the item. And it looks exactly like I told it. Now that this drag wall item here can be anything. And when I drop it, the on drop event is firing. Now we have nothing to drop it on. Nothing is accepting the on drop event. So let's wire that up. Like I said, we're gonna need four blueprints. Here's our last one. User interface, blueprint, widget blueprint, and we'll call this drag two. Now you'll notice in my example, when I created this for my drag from, I made an interface. This is our player UI. And inside of that is a box that holds our draggable items. It doesn't have to be like that. You don't have to have five recovery, five recovery, five places for five froms. You don't need five twos for five froms. You can have whatever you want. It just has to be a widget that accepts the input, the drop operation, and then does something. So what I mean by that is here's my drag two. My drag two is gonna be really simple yet again. Let's do an image. Let's go ahead and we're not going to size our image because we're going to resize this inside of our user interface. And let's change it to a, what color don't we have? I don't think we have a, let's go with purple. That'll work. And this is our drag too. We will go back to our UI. Let's find a uh, drag two, drop it into our screen here. And let's make it a big old item right here. This is going to receive our drag two events. We'll run it, and well, nothing's happening. Well, we hooked up our drag event. We hooked up what happens when we drag it. Now we need to hook up what happens when we drop it. So inside of our drag two, this is what's going to receive the drop. Well, functions, override, on drop. Boom. So this is what's gonna happen when we drop it. And you'll notice down here, we have an operation. This is the reference to the operation that was passed along when we did the drag drop. When we look here and we look at our draggable item and we look at this here, when you create a drag and drop operation, this is what's gonna be returned. So we'll find things like the visual, a payload if we pass it along. This is why I mentioned there'll be two videos. The payload will not be covered in this one. A tag and then a class if you want something specific to be built. And the class is nice because that allows you to pass along custom data, such as maybe you want an item ID and an image that's defaulted and things like that. What we want to do now is on our drag two, we're gonna do something. And I'm gonna make this really simple. I'm gonna take our image and get it. I'm gonna set the color and opacity of our image when we drop it to a random color. That's it, nothing fancy here. Let me split the struct pin. We're going to do a random int in range. We're going to do 0 to 1. I'm going to copy and paste this three times. And of course, I random float because it takes a 0 to 1 value. Duh. There we go. Float and float. There we go. Let's go ahead and do red, green, and blue. And we still want one for the opacity. Drag this over, make it easier. And there we go. Let's see what happens. Whoops. Once we're done here, we need to tell the interface that we've handled it properly. We've successfully accepted the drop operation. So we want to make sure the return value is true. We handled it. We want to do something. Let's hit play, drag, drop, drag, drop, and there you go. That is literally the basics of dragging and dropping. You have an item that accepts a drag. You detect the drag when the mouse is down and I start dragging. I create a visual for it. And then when I drop it on something that accepts a drop, the drop operation handles and it does something. There you go. And that's it. Like I said, this is going to be a basic introductory to it. Things like the operation, things like the payload, those will be covered in separate videos because they are more advanced topics. But this is your basics and understanding. Now I will be creating a secondary video for dragging and dropping. That will be a concept to show you how you can put all this into play. Let me open that up right now. And let me show you, this will be the goal I end up 
going to. We hit play. Let's. Uh, that's my simple map. Let's open up my uh, regular map. Here we go. And we hit play, and we have a toolbar at the bottom. I can hit I to open up an inventory. We have some things we can drag around. We have only ones we can drag that are valid. We can drop them on our bar anywhere we want, and you see they go on the bar. They have all unique information. And then if we hit the hotkey like one, it'll tell us we used icy fire. Or if we move the sword here, we use slashy sword slash. Or we have fiery fireball, and you can see it is using the buttons I push. One is fiery fireball, two is icy ice ball. You can close the screen. This is really simple and basic, but it's a little bit more advanced, and it utilizes all the features we're going to cover in the basic how-to videos for drag and drop. And this will be a concept video that will be released when the drag and drop videos are done. So that's going to wrap up our how do I use drag and drop in Unreal Engine 4 video number one. Let me recover the flow so it's really simple. You're going to have at least three items for your dragging and dropping. Something that's going to accept a drag, something that's going to receive the drag, the dropping, and then something somewhere that's going to hold these items, so your main user interface. Optionally, you can have a separate draggable widget if you wish to change the item that you're dragging. And the general flow is your draggable item listens for a drag. If it's detected, you create a drag and drop operation using an optional widget if you want to create something new. Your receiving item listens for the on drop event and you do whatever you feel like. As a quick wrap up, let me show you, for example, an easy way if you want to do something on your own to pass along information. I'm going to type in a tag here, and this tag is awesome. Uh, okay. This tag is awesome. If I go to my drag2 and we pull this open and we type in tag, in the drag and drop, I can get the tag and we'll see that it's going to return. Let's do print string. When I drop, it's going to print out. Whoops. There we go. Print drag and drop. It's going to print out awesome. Now, if each of these items on our screen, these draggable items right here, if each of these had that value exposed, let's see if I can do this quickly. Um, promote to variable. I might be able to do this really quickly here. Um, unique ID. Let's make this public. I can't remember if you can set this separately, but we'll find out here in a second. Okay, so here's my drag from. Okay, here's my unique ID. So unique ID is awesome. Unique ID is, let's go with Bonerific from Family Guy. Let's go with Tubular. Let's go with four because it's the fourth one and we didn't even spell it right. And let's go with uh, Phenomenal. And I have no clue if that's spelled right. Now we have five different IDs. Let's see what happens. We're pa we should be passing along the unique string inside the draggable. And let's see if it worked. We have awesome, bonerific, tubular, four, and phenomenal. And there we go. That's a way that I assigned a unique ID, passed it along to the drop, and then did something on the unique ID. And you'll find in that draggable example for the um, concept that I'll be releasing, that's how I passed along an item ID, well, technically a skill ID, I used a data table, I looked up the skill ID, and that gave me all the information I needed to fill out the bar properly. Now this is the easy way of doing it, by using tags. The next videos will cover how to use the payload and the classes to give you a more advanced and robust drag and drop with more information. So now that is going to wrap up the video for how do I use drag and drop, number one.